everybody, Terry White here, Worldwide Photography Evangelist at Adobe. It's my pleasure and my favorite time of year because it's my favorite day. It's Adobe Max Keynote Day where we roll out all the new features and all the new things at Adobe. I'm here to show you three new features in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic that will forever change the way you use Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. Now, doesn't matter which application I show them in, whether it's Lightroom Classic, the one you've been using on your desktop for years and years, or Lightroom, the one you can use on your desktop or mobile, cloud-based, up, backup, upload, all that. Doesn't matter which one I do it in because the features are the same. So it's just a matter of me flipping back and forth between them just so people can see it in the one that they use. All right, so with that said, what are these three things and why are they so important? So if I look at my desktop, here I've got Lightroom Classic. I'm in a collection of about 22 photos. And if I pop over to Lightroom, I've got those same 22 photos. So it doesn't matter which one I'm in. But what's different is last year we introduced what we referred to as masking 2.0. It was like just changing the way you did masking in Lightroom. And if you were using Lightroom or Lightroom Classic before last October, you know what I mean. Like it was just night and day what you could do. Now, I haven't heard a name for this year's new masking capabilities, but I'm going to go on a limb and say I call them masking 3.0 because they're just as significant as last year's masking and it will forever change the way we use Lightroom. So let's go ahead and pop over to Lightroom Classic. We'll start there. I've got an image. Um, I'll go into the develop module. And it's basically a person stand, it's a stock image person standing on kind of a green foliage background. Okay, she's got red hair. I want to change the color of her hair. Now, if you wanted to do that before in Lightroom Classic, you'd have to reach over for your adjustment brush and painstakingly paint in all the hair so that you would be able to mask it and change it. That all goes away starting today. Today, when I switch over to the masking icon, first and foremost, it now detects one or more people in your scene. So there's only one person in here, detected person one. Now before, if you did select subject, this is the kind of mask you would get where it would select the entire person. And you still can do that. But when I click on the person, I now get choices. I get face skin, I get body skin, I get eyebrows, I get eye sclera, which I assume is the white parts of the eye. Learn something new. I get iris and pupil. I get lips and I get hair. So I can do any combinations of these. If I wanted the face skin and the body skin, I can select them both and create one mask or create separate mask. But in this case, I only want the hair. So when I create a mask for the hair, the hair is automatically selected. So now if I use local hue, just like that, I can change the color of her hair. This is crazy to be able to do this again with one click to kind of match that background that she's on. Awesome. Well, what if I also wanted to do the lips and I forgot to select them? No problem. Create another new mask. And we're going to do, um, again, people. And we only have the one person there. And we're just going to go ahead and grab lips. So now when I click create that mask, that's a separate mask that I can do anything I want with, including changing that color as well. So maybe I want that kind of maybe that green, but maybe not as bright. So let's lower the opacity of it. There we go. And kind of get that down to where we want it to be. And maybe, um, yeah, that looks cool. So with that said, again, whatever color, you know, I'm not a makeup artist, so maybe I'm picking the wrong color there. Maybe something more like that. But you get the idea. You can now go in and individually mask things with AI and on people and have make whatever changes you need to make. All right, so now let's pop over to Lightroom. Again, just because we can and do the same kind of thing. We got this person here. And now I notice this person is being photographed like sunset looks like, maybe sunrise. And because of the yellow lighting, his teeth may be a little bit yellower than they really are in real life. So let's go ahead and go to our edit. And again, we'll go to mask. We're doing the same thing. We'll detect people even though we're in Lightroom instead of Lightroom Classic. We click on our person. And instead of um, the entire person, we just want teeth. Now, if the teeth weren't showing, then it would hide that option. So it's not only going to give you check boxes for things that are showing. For example, his body skin is showing because his body skin is below his neck, and we can see it. But if it wasn't, that checkbox wouldn't be there. So let's go ahead and click Create Teeth Mask, 
And now all we need to do is just give them a little bit less saturation and that will bring down the yellowing in his teeth, just like that. So here's a before, there's an after. That quickly, that easy, subtle change, but it makes all the difference in the world when you're trying to create a winning portrait. Now let's stay here for a second in Lightroom. Uh, let's pop over to the next photo. Then we'll pop back over to Lightroom Classic for the next one. All right, so now, what if there's multiple people? Well, you already see what it did. It selected, a, it made a mask for each person, even though it um, kind of like, yeah, it did it. I was gonna say, it kind of left the hand off on one, but yeah, that's his hand, so it worked. It even figured out his hand is around his neck. You gotta love AI. All right, so anyway, what I wanna, what I wanna do here is I noticed these two guys for this kind of warm uh, lighting, they look warm in temperature, but she's a little colder, a little brighter than the rest of the people in the scene. And again, that's just the lighting. It's just the way it hit her face that it didn't warm her face as much as it did the other two. So we'll select her and then we'll go ahead and create a mask and we'll notice it, it I don't want eyebrows, notice it gives me face skin, but not body skin because you can't see her body skin. You can only see her face skin. Create a mask, no problem. And now we'll just go ahead and we'll do a couple things. We'll increase the temperature ever so slightly, just to give her face a little bit more of that warming light. And then we'll go ahead and lower the opacity again, ever so slightly, to kind of make her face not as bright as it was, and kind of more in line with the other two from a lighting perspective. All right, so again, here's our before, here's our after, a mask created with one click, just of her face, just what we needed. And you can create as many masks as you want. Create as many combinations as you want. And you can even mask multiple people. So for example, if I need to create a mask, again, of people, and I wanted this guy, I can go ahead and add a person. So let's go ahead and add a person here. And we'll go ahead and add him as well. So if I needed a mask for both people, I could get just those two and create a mask of just those two, and then do whatever I want to do with those two people. So it's very flexible in the way it does this masking. All right, so that was number one. All the new people options, all the new skin, eyes, sclera, all that stuff for people is my number one thing that will change the way you use Lightroom forever. Let's go to number two. I'm gonna pop back over to Lightroom Classic, and again, we'll pop over to our next image here. Our next image is this kid throwing a Frisbee and she whispered to me after she had that picture taken and said, I wish my Frisbee was red. So no problem. Now again, if we were, we're not selecting a person, we're not selecting a sky, we're not selecting a background, we're selecting an object. So there is no, oh wait, now there is. Select objects. So the object selection tool comes over from the technology in Photoshop because Photoshop has an object selection tool too. The difference here is instead of doing a lasso or a rectang or rectangular selection, you're actually just gonna paint it in. And I don't have to stay within the lines. I'm getting real crazy here with the painting. No problem, as long as I get that selected, it figures out I want the Frisbee. So again, using that AI selecting, it's figuring out what I want. And I can go ahead and give her the Frisbee color of her choice. She did say red, right? There's red. All right, so give her the red Frisbee she wanted, or maybe a little more pink, I don't know. All right, there we go. And we can even lower the opacity of that so it looks, exposure, I should say. So it looks a bit, little bit more red. Now she's a happy kid, and it's child's play making these object selections. All right, so speaking of which, we'll stay in Lightroom Classic for this next one. I'm gonna change the color of this guy's shirt. Now this is kind of a complicated selection. The shirt's here, his sleeve is in the front, this sleeve is in the back, it's kind of covered, it's not all connected. So again, this would be an adjustment brush nightmare. You'd probably pop over to Photoshop and do it there. But no problem, it selected all three people, so if I needed those, I could do that, but I want objects. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make my brush a little bit bigger to save time. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just start brushing, because again, I don't have to be crazy accurate I can just go ahead and brush whatever I want and it will figure it out. Or if it doesn't, which I'm expecting it not to, I'll show you what to do. So again, you, oh my God, I'm selecting this beard. I'm selecting all over the place. Doesn't matter as long as I get the stuff I want selected. 
So I'm going to go over here. Oh no, I'm selecting her sleeve. I'm selecting this stuff down here, her hand, her finger. No problem. Look at what it did. It got most of it. Didn't get it all, but it got most of it. No problem. Well, it created this mask, and I could now click on that mask and click Add. And I can say Add More Objects. I can say, hey, yeah, you know what? You kind of missed this sleeve the first time. Even though I painted it in, you didn't know what I was talking about. So now, oh, now you know what I'm talking about. And by the way, let's add one more. So we're adding to the existing mask using the same method, objects. And we'll, oh, <laughs> hang on. Got a little crazy there. I clicked by mistake. Let's go add objects again. There we go. And now we'll just go ahead and paint right there. All right, and it figured out what I wanted. So now that's kind of got it all. It's got the whole shirt. So again, if I want to come over to my local hue and change the color of a shirt to whatever color I want, it's child's play. It's just that easy to do this kind of work. I kind of like the green on this guy. Looks kind of cool. All right, again, things that you would never have attempted to do in Lightroom or Lightroom Classic unless you had a ton of time on your hands. Now become easy and only takes seconds. Okay, so... That was number two, the object selections. Number three, and I gotta say number three is probably my favorite. Might've been why I saved it for last. Let's pop over to Lightroom, we'll do it there. Let's pop over to this photo. And this photo is someone standing next to a brick or kind of a concrete wall. And you end up spending more time, instead of looking at the person, looking at the other stuff. Like what are these two things sticking out here? What's that? What's this little crack in the wall? So you end up looking at and trying to figure out the distractions. So that's why I love removing distractions. Now in the past, if you'd have gone over and you would have used the, the old healing brush and you tried to paint it in, it would kind of like bounce over somewhere and maybe it would do a good job, maybe it wouldn't. And if it didn't, you'd have to move it around and try and get where you wanted it to be. And this was all, and let's see, now it doesn't look right. It was better the first, oh, nope, still didn't look right. You know what? delete because if this were Photoshop and you were using the spot healing tool in Photoshop it would be content aware and use the surrounding pixels it wouldn't jump over and try and guess another area well that technology has finally made its way over to Lightroom and Lightroom Classic and even Lightroom on mobile has it today so it's this new tool, the Content Aware Remove tool. It looks like an eraser. And if I now go over and paint this same area, and when I let go, instead of it popping over to a different spot, it uses the surrounding pixels to fill in. So just like it would in Photoshop, I now have that option here in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. I could not be happier. This is gonna change everything. It's gonna change me having to go to Photoshop all the time for this kind of work. Now let's pop over to Lightroom Classic and see it there. So I've got a photo here with kind of a distracting object um, popping into the scene here. Now I could crop it, but then I'm going to crop off part of a shoulder and it's just no need. The only thing that makes me hesitate is there's a brick wall here and there's a pattern to that brick wall and I, I don't know if it's going to get it right or not. So let's go ahead and try it. Before I would have never tried it. I would have never, because it would have jumped over here and it would have not matched. I would have never tried it before. I've just gone to Photoshop. But now I'm gonna use the Content Aware uh, Remove tool and I'm just gonna paint this in. And you'll notice that it uses kind of an outline as a brush. I'm just gonna get it all here. And when I let go, not too bad. Like I'm amazed at how well this works sometimes because I just would never expect it to get that right. And there we are, it got it right. And I didn't have to crop my image. All right, we got one more of these examples I could show. I'm gonna pop over to uh, Lightroom to show it. And then we'll go to kind of a bonus. Even though this is thing number three, I got a three and a half, I got a bonus one. All right, so um, this is Pixel. This is his name. And Pixel has got wearing his leash and he's like kind of bummed out about it and we kind of wish the leash wasn't there. So no problem, using the Content Aware Remove tool. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and paint this in. 
So instead of an outline in Lightroom, it makes it white for some reason, but no problem. That helps me see what I got and what I didn't get. And when I let go, it analyzed and it got rid of it all, just like that. So that is our before and that is our after here in Lightroom and Lightroom Classic using the new Content Aware Remove tool. All right, last but not least, let's do the bonus. Let's pop over to Lightroom Classic and let's pop over to this image. And I've got this image here and there's nothing wrong with the image. The image is fine, except this kind of nice leafy green background is just as sharp and just as in focus and just as bright as the rest of the subject. So while you definitely are looking at the subject, you might be glancing at the leaves, you might be glancing at the vines, you might be glancing at things that are, are again, a distraction. So let's just de-emphasize that background. So we head over to our mask, and before today, you might have done a select subject, and then click invert, and select a background. And you still can. But today, you have a new, just simply select the background. Boom, it does that for you. It does that, all that jockeying around of selecting subject and inverting, it does it in one click. So now I can do things like bring down the texture of that background, bring down the clarity of that background, bring down the exposure just a little bit of that background, and maybe even um, do a little bit of dehaze to that background so that my subject stands out even more. So again, before, after, before, after, with our brand new masking option that just selects the background for you automatically. All right, so those are three and a half things that are gonna change the way you use Lightroom and Lightroom Classic forever. Cheers, everyone. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Go check out Max. It's online if you're not in person in LA. And you can see it there and you'll see more. Bye, everybody. Have a great one.